new program repping gcapcoolcast.com today i'd like to bring you another video cast uh it is march 2nd of 2021 a little shout out to my brother it's your birthday tomorrow so happy birthday jake the snake but uh nevertheless uh today's topic is about ammonia sensors placement location and how many we need a lot of questions coming in by email and phone call the last couple weeks and it was also a hot topic last week in our psm boot camp class getting into machine room design and best practices uh, so what would we look at about ammonia sensors and who has something to say about them? I always like to go on the ranking systems of authority and let's just see what the government says. Both OSHA and EPA and the PSM standards both have uh, some insight about wanting to have engineering and administrative controls to have the proper equipment and policies in place to be able to be aware of releases and the process hazard analysis and gives examples of fixed sensors. Uh, when we look at IIAR's perspective from a standard, uh, they say you just need one. And when we look at that answer, well, where would I put it and everything else that goes with it. Uh, I'm standing in GCAP's engine room number one. This particular engine room has six sensors. Uh, where we've located each and every one of them is based upon a hazardous assessment that would most likely best benefit both our staff, our students, uh, the community, and everything else. And um, we take these fixed sensors and they go to remote uh, processors that are managed and that have the capability to automatically give us enunciations of what's taking place and activation, which is a great defense for us not needing to have 24-7 coverage in this machine room and engine room. So let me flip this camera around just a little bit. That's our blast freezer in there. There's a fixed sensor. Highly, highly recommended to have fixed sensors in all areas of confined space that aren't normally occupied. Um, and then going from there, uh, some other quick things, those are the intake louvers to this engine room. And as that intake louvers open, you're going to find that all the air will actually be channeled and comes this direction as I'm walking this way. And it'll make its way through the openings and it comes up and over the compressor if that was to take place. And it would be coming down this way and then it starts literally heading back that direction, which on the other side of that surge drum is uh, one of the two exhaust fan locations that exist here. And um, we have our limits set at 25 ppm. We have our limits set at 50 ppm. And uh, that would determine when we would have an alarm and ventilation, full potential, manual reset, etc. And um, there's a lot that goes into it. It's a very, very open ended question. Uh, we have this week Daniel here with us from Calibration Technologies, and uh, he's actually here on his six-month interval of doing calibrations of all of our sensors. So Daniel, say hi. You're on Facebook Live right now, my friend. Hi. So I just want to ask him a couple questions. He's one of their field service techs. How long have you worked with CTI, Daniel? About 10 years. That's some good time, some good experience. You know, with all of that time and experience you've had in the field, what are something that you typically see that could be an improvement? A lot of the plants based upon, you know, sensors, early detection, alarm, warning, protecting people, companies, assets, etc. What kind of feedback would you give, ma'am? Uh, with the recent changes they've made in codes and things have gotten more strict in recent years, uh, most of the plants are catching up with that and doing pretty good. The, the biggest thing that could be improved usually is location of the sensors, accessibility, so we can do this, calibrate them. Absolutely. So the sensor that you're working on right now is uh, basically about five feet off the ground. And when you look at the interpretation from, you know, like OSHA's perspective, if we were just to choose one, I think that would be the greatest defense taking place. But we've also got to consider where the air movement and gases would be moving in that engine room, mechanical room, whether we had fixed detection or ventilation or no ventilation taking place as well. Um, some of the facilities I've been personally myself, you find some of them were put really, really high up in the air. And you know that that was a suggestion quite a while ago because the theory was if I have an ammonia leak, it's probably going to rise. Uh, but also we have ammonia leaks, big, big liquid releases. It could fall in that situation. Um, there's nothing worse than having a safety and a safeguard and it not working. And if we can't get to them to reassure accurate sensors, replacement, calibration, whatever it may be, that could be a huge downfall from that perspective. That's right, because when these things die, they die quietly. Yeah. No. Yep, that's absolutely. So, well, Daniel, I appreciate the time being here, and thanks for the question. I'll let you get back to work and everything that you do for us here. Thank that's you, right. Daniel. Thank you. So that's a little bit of insight to, you know, the sensor, the idea, how many, how many more do you want, how do you defend. Um, 
basically a great plan in place to help mitigate early announcement of releases that could be there and then putting these safeties in place what kind of safeguards are there um, I'm excited to bring you another video cast this week before we have closure here just want to make a few announcements on behalf of GCAP uh, big big week for us on our online division uh, two new classes just launched and landed uh, we have the Spanish ammonia operator one part one ready to go and live and um, just announced this morning to the industry our eight hour HazWAP refresher is now ready to go all online as well and um, this video podcast if it wasn't for people like CTI and calibration technologies and everything else that vendors like this do for us we couldn't do what we do so this is a big shout out to y'all and thank you for the sponsorship of this podcast this video cast and uh, calibration technologies incorporated CTI we couldn't do it without people like you so we truly appreciate it till we see each other again everybody keep it in the pipes